Welcome to My Whiskey Den, your favorite public access whiskey review show where craft whiskey is king. And we are talking about a light whiskey today, which is not something you usually find or see too many people putting out. But we want to thank our friend Kevin Rose for coming back again today to talk Wisconsin whiskey with us. Thank you very much for joining us, Kevin. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me, Eric. All right. Now, this whiskey comes from La Crosse Distilling in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Sorry. Um, last time there was a glitch in the stream and we lost a little bit of the information. So I'm here to fill you in. Um, this is an entirely standalone, unique version of their light or high rye light whiskey. Um, their high, high rye light whiskey is 60% rye and 40% wheat. This particular spirit came about when they were getting ready to open their doors and they thought they were going to be able to offer a white rye whiskey only to be told by the TTB that there was no such spirit category and white rye or for a white rye whiskey. Then they discovered the light whiskey category in the spirits book when they were going through it, trying to find something unique, something different to do. By definition, a light whiskey has to come off the still between 160 and 190 proof and then needs to be aged for at least a day in used charred barrel or a new lightly toasted barrel. They can sit as long as you want, but it has to be at least a day. They initially tried uh, a couple days and let it go over a month. And then after a little bit of taste testing through that time period, they came up with you know, a couple weeks was kind of the right ballpark for what they do. And they typically use a combination of used charred and lightly toasted barrels in their in their release. This particular selection was done by the Secret Midnight Whiskey Club from Naismith in Appleton, Wisconsin. They had already done a pick with Driftless Glen and had a used bourbon barrel, and they wanted to age the high rye whiskey in the bourbon barrel and they did for about a year and a day now a couple other things also very green to glass uh with what they do uh if they don't have it it's sourced from a very from a local farm right within the area for what they're doing and a lot of the stuff um and i, I really like their bottle because at the top they do do a wax but check it it's like a honey wax so it's really light it's That's almost cool. clear and it's mm. yellow so it almost looks like someone just dripped honey over the top of the bottle to do it instead of this huge thick other stuff so a little different play on it and it itself is pretty light and clear i mean you're you're seeing right through it on this one um so something a little bit different but they are starting to put out they have uh, a rye and I, I think they have a rye and a bourbon as well too at this point this is just one of the first things they were starting to play around with. Now, some noses so, on what this do you thing. guys get? Ooh, excuse me. There's a number of notes I'm getting, but straight off the bat, it really reminds me of a young malt. Mm -hmm. Like a young single malt versus, you know, a rye or something of that derivative. Oh, there's like a super sweet caramely note for me. Like that's not the first yeah. thing, but it was like midway yeah. through. It's like a like a hard like a like a bin full of hard candy. Yeah, like Werther's Originals, like sitting on the in, in yeah. a big pile. It, it, I, I'm impressed but, that they're making it. Yeah. That it's not an MGP source light whiskey. <clears throat> that is exactly one of the things we we were talking about. That I think it's really neat. Uh, it's it's just if everyone's playing with different stuff, and this yeah. is just something that someone else, most people aren't playing with. Mm -hmm. You know. Huh. I, get, I get some orange, but it's not like orange. It's more like an orange lifesaver, like fake yep. orange. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was trying to pick the right type of like soda-ish orange. Yeah. Like it's not orange juice. Right. It's like Fanta. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or some sort of orange gum. Like, yeah, it's an Ooh, artificial, orange gum. Artificial orange, almost like some type of medicine or something that's got an orange yeah. flavoring to it. 
there, there's a little bit of dill on it, but it's not as much as you get I'm with a lot like of a rice. I'm getting a sugary but... syrup note too. Like there, I don't know. It's that's kind of mixed in with the gum smell for me. It's like yeah. a sugar sweet gum. Yeah, bubble yum maybe. I'm trying to pick yeah. it. It's not big league chew, but it's it's no. Some... <laughs> it, like fruit stripe gum is that they have an fruit orange stripe, flavor, right? Yes, yeah. that is exactly where I was about to go with this. Take about two chews and the flavor's gone. <laughs> That's yes. exactly. Yes. You exactly. got to nail that one, Kevin, because yeah. fruit stripe is a very gum is a good way to put this. All right, I'm getting in here. <laughs> the most Man. delicious and unsatisfying gum at the same time. <laughs> Going back to our childhood here. That's right. <laughs> Benjamin, I see that single malt kind of coming yeah. through on the flavor too, don't you? Yep, exactly. It's like pear and apple and those light fruit notes. Mm -hmm. of, a, of an easy sipping Highland, almost Glen Livy. Yeah. That's where I, was, I thought you guys were going to go back there, so I'm happy you did because right on the palate, I'm like, oh, that is... That's a friendly malt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so friendly is a good way to put it. This is very friendly to drink. Yeah. Honey, sweet sugar, yeah. apricot. Apricot, for sure. Yeah. Although the light, the light fruits, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not Nothing real dark in there at right. all. A little bit of white grape. Mm-hmm. But the front almost has like this qual like a sugar quality where I feel like it's an it's almost already a mixed drink. Mm -hmm. Like well, or, even even oh, the texture, the mouthfeel of it, it's it's very watery. It's you know there's not a lot of mm -hmm. oils to it. There's not mm -hmm. it just it just washes down really easy. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it it starts off almost like you put a sugar cube on your tongue, and then all of those fruit flavors kind of follow it and then in the finish you get a little pepper a little oak a little dill and, and the fruit kind of fades away to me mm -hmm. but everything is really light in, in this I, mm -hmm. I, obviously it's a light whiskey it's not going for something heavy it's trying to create mass appeal but it i know they were saying it'd be neat to put into like uh, mixed drink and they wanted if you have ideas to come up with it this almost comes really close i know you haven't had it, kevin next time i get a bottle i'll send you a sample of this it's called the mellows mm -hmm. it's uh honey it's basically a distilled honey S same thing we're on its own you get all these flavors but i think once you start mixing it with too much stuff like maybe you could add one or two flavors mm -hmm. to to a mixed drink with this but i think it might kill it right and too much like i think with the demellos he's like really you just take a mint to sprig, kind of rub it around, and mm -hmm. just a little titch of like e even just carbonated water. Mm -hmm. That's good enough to to let it be the center mm -hmm. stage without killing it. Yeah, I mean, e even just tossing in some a few dashes of bitters and and leaving it at that. But I think you're right. If you put a lot else in there, you're going to wipe it out. I, I just say, yeah. Even, yeah, even if you splash this down with some uh, soda water or something, it's going to be almost too much. You're going to just completely dilute the flavors yep. that are there. Either that, or if you're looking to get drunk really quick, it's going to go down like nothing. Yeah. Right. You know, it's right. Just, here, here's some cucumber water. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a delicate whiskey. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. even no, even nosing it right now, it almost reminds me more of a Pinot Grigio, like a white, an Italian white wine, more yep. than it does a whiskey. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. It's very yeah. light. But this was a. Uh, this was one that, out of the batch, it was one that I found probably one of the most interesting just because of the f amount of flavors I did get out of it mm -hmm. when I first tasted it. I wasn't expecting to get as much. I could tell that it did have a rye -like barrel, and that is probably what's giving it just enough extra little kick and spice for a mm -hmm. second, but... It, for what it is, I thought this was this was a pretty interesting little little fun project. Um, yeah. So I I would get another bottle of this just just to play with it. You know, yeah. I mean, you, just to drink it yeah. or to play with it. There's there's a lot of neat stuff with this, and it's only forty five percent. So right. it's not it's not going to kill you. And I think this one was probably around thirty ish. So right. not 
nothing nothing bad if yeah. you're going to be going to play with things. And that's a good thing to have as if you if you've got some buddies over. Hey, here's something you probably haven't tried before. Right. Yeah. You know. You want to do that early in the evening, though. <laughs> you know, if you're waiting till the end, this is going to just wash out. But uh, I, w- I was pleasantly surprised uh, at yeah. the, the amount of flavor from it. Yeah, I thought it was unique. So, um, yeah, pretty surprised. And we're we'll look we're looking to have some of those on. I'm going to be getting their Toledo one here in a little bit, um, but only found in 2019. So they're really just, you know, starting to get stuff moving, kind of in that beginning process of stuff. And so you're starting to see some of the flavors from around there come out in this. Uh, they're in kind of the Driftless Glen area, across mm-hmm. a little bit uh, northwest of that, but still in that same area. So you're getting a lot of that area that wasn't changed by the glaciers and has a little bit different terroir than some of the other parts of Wisconsin. Obviously, Driftless Glen whiskey in the same same vicinity and i i'm going to be interested to try some of that with some of some of this stuff when it gets older versus some of the stuff driftless blend is doing to see if you're picking up on some of the same notes even if they're not using the same rise and stuff if you're getting some of the same flavoring out of it um but if i didn't mention another fantastic reason to stop here um is their food their restaurant is effing amazing and wait we're 11 minutes in. it's fucking amazing like the pictures they put up <laughs> I'm like, if I lived in lacrosse, I would probably be eating here two or three times a week because it looks fantastic and it is not crazy priced. It's like, oh, 12 chicken wings for $6 and they're like fancy gourmet ones. Is like, I can go spend 20 bucks on wings and 20 bucks on booze and go home happy with $40 gone. Where other places, that's a drink. Um, <laughs> So that's another thing. If, if you're out there, be sure to stop in. They do have some excellent food, and that's a whole nother reason to stop in and check them out. Hey, um, I wanted to jump in and stop you right before you left to remind everyone that earlier this week, we did a show with and an evening with with Daniel Whittington and Emma Newmeyer from Crowded Barrel. Stop over there. Take a look at that. It was a lot of fun. Some good information um, out of that episode. And I also wanted to let everyone know that this coming week on Monday, we're going to be doing an evening with Gene Nastiff from Cat's Eye Distillery. We are going to be talking about some of the whiskey that they're putting it out and also the Obtanium series that he's responsible for where he goes out and finds, finds unique whiskeys and brings them to the market underneath that label. And we have had some pretty interesting stuff from him um, just with that series alone. So make sure you stop out for that. But from everyone here, and th- and Kevin, thanks for stopping in. Remember, it's not the size of the den that matters. It's the love of whiskey. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Let's get into it. One, two, three.